Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial on the Soggy Sleeves YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating my most effective, um, pretty realistic chronomid pattern, midge pattern. Uh, this is my go-to on lots of my still waters around me as well as Pyramid Lake or anywhere in general where I know there's midges, even rivers. This fly will do well. Super easy, super simple, very durable, and very realistic looking. Um, the orange, the copper, the rusty brown, it's a very common color for midges. Something else you could do is instead of doing the gills and the bronze bead or brown bead, you could do a white bead instead. Less steps. Um, I, like, I like both. I'll fish both. Before you start tying this fly, you'll need these materials. Um, for a hook, here I'm using Firehole Sticks um, 315. It's a nymph hook, heavy gauge wire, because I will be using this at Pyramid Lake. This one's a size 12. I'll tie them as small as 14 or 16, as big as 10 or 8. This one, the size 12, pairs well with a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead, just a round bead. This one's just called brown, metallic brown, I think. The body thread for the fly, this is, um, what is this, 50 denier vivis in just white. It's GSP. Um, this is very thin, so I like it as I'm tying in the gills. You'll see in here in a second. And then to build up the underbody, which turns kind of grayish, I use just 140 denier UTC because this thread lays flat and it fills up bulk and it's going to create that really nice white underbody. Um, and then to finish off the fly, the thread wraps behind the bead. This is just any thread in rusty brown. This one's uni thread, but really whatever. Rusty brown is a very hard color to find. It sells out quickly. This is 70 denier um, or eight aught. But anyways, that's what I like using with these flies. Then the double rib incorporates ultra wire and black small and some sort of small brown hollow tinsel. This is Vivas in just straight brown. It's kind of dark. Another great substitution for that is just small flashaboo. This one's a lighter color, it's orange. You'll just need one strand of that is all. Okay, so to get started, let's throw this hook and this bead in the vise. Push that back. Then I'm going to tie on this Vivas. This GSP is really hard to cut. And then for the gills, I've just got this sort of Zelon material. I can't remember what this one's called exactly. It's not in its original packaging, but this one, the strand that it comes in is perfect size. So you don't have to pull it in half. You don't have to double it over. So I'll cut off a few inches of this because I'll tie a bunch of flies with it. I tie this in in a very specific way that I've found works best for me. Um, these ends that I just cut are square, so I will just line them up, lay them on top of the hook shank like that, grab it with my other finger, and just do a few kind of loose thread wraps while I'm getting it on there. Then I'll pull it up to make sure it's sitting right on top of the hook. Take a few more back tighter to make sure it's really lashed down. I like to, I need to leave myself enough that I can kind of grab it and pull it up. Is I'm going to take a cut at a shallow angle. Now these ends will be able to be covered up really well, very easily. Then I need to work my way back to the front and come in front of this. And these th thread wraps in front are very important because it's going to gather all of this Elon material together and point it upwards. So as the bead slides over, that's not going to crowd the hook eye very much. This is also where I'm going to do my whip finish before snipping off this thread. Okay, so that bead slides over nicely. I'm going to leave that there just for a little bit. I'll cut it off shortly. Reattach the thread just behind the bead now. I really like this 50 denier. Um, I think it's also called 16 knot in some different thread sizes because you can use a lot of it and it's not going to build up bulk because there are several different body materials we'll be tying in with this fly so if you're using a bulky thread you're going to ruin your midge profile before you know it. So I got to pull off a little bit of this 
black ultra thread, pull off like five or six inches, it'll make a bunch of flies. You can just break this. You don't have to snip it. Save your scissors. I'm gonna tie this in directly on top of the hook. So I insert it into the bead a little bit on the top just to hold it in place. If you go too far down the hook, you lose valuable bare hook shank that can actually penetrate into the fish's mouth. So if you tie it way down to the bottom, there's not that much bare hook that can slide into the fish's mouth. You're not gonna hook them well. Um, and actually you can, so this is a number 12 hook that we mentioned. If you just end your fly earlier, you can tie a 14 or a 16, but still have a strong big hook for those bigger fish. That really comes in handy at Pyramid Lake. So tie multiple size flies on the same size hook. Make your life a whole lot easier. Okay, now we're working back up to the front. Next, we're going to tie in the hollow tinsel. It's also helpful to insert this into the bead because it kind of holds it in place while you're tying if you still have enough room on that bead. Keep it exposed to you so you can see it and it's making it kind of difficult. Okay. Now I'm tying this onto the far side of the hook, the side away from me, the side closest to you, the viewer, um, because I need this to lay next to that wire, but on that side, and I'll show you why once we start wrapping it. Okay, now you can see I've made several passes and I still don't have a whole lot of thread bulk built up, so that's awesome. The last thing I'm gonna do, um, Rather than use three different bobbins with three different threads built up, because I'm going to use this to build up the white body, I'm just going to pull off a little bit of this as if I was tying in like a floss or a tinsel or something. You don't need much, maybe 10 inches. Okay, and I double it over on this thread, make sure the ends are even. And then I'm just going to tie it in. This UTC that lays really flat um, is very handy in creating a nice taper. Um, so I'm gonna kind of start to work on my taper here with this thin white thread, but I'm gonna perfect the taper with that 140 denier here in a second. Okay, so you can use that bead, pull it rearward, use the back edge of the bead as a guide, and that's where you're gonna snip it. Then all of your flies are gonna be uniform. If anything, make it shorter than you think it needs to be. That's what I've noticed. Okay, just gonna do a little half hitch to save my place. Get this bobbin over on the bobbin cradle. Okay, now there's two ways you can get this double rib onto the fly. Um, you can go just one at a time do the, if you do that, do the wire first because then it's easier to work the tinsel into it. But something I like to do and why I tied it in this way is I actually do like a little, I, I twist these a little bit around each other and that does a really good job of keeping them side by side as you wrap. And so what we're hoping to see here is that this wire lays right in front of this tinsel and if I don't quite get it right, I'll just back off and come back. There we go. And I start with the wraps pretty close together. I want to get about six or seven in here. And then I space them out as I work my way up. That's kind of how the natural segments look on these is they get more spaced out as you work up towards the fly or towards the front of the fly. Okay, see that worked pretty well. Okay, hold those tight. Tie it off with my thin thread. Okay, snip the tinsel out of the way first. Then you can shorten up your bobbin, brace it right against the bead. That's gonna help pull that thread tight and you can start to do helicopter wraps to break off this wire. Okay, throwing a couple half hitches. I'm going to snip off this thread and finish it off with my rusty brown. You don't have to, I just like doing that for some reason. I mean, you will see that the, um, whatever that is, thorax, abdomen, shit, I don't know. Um, 
on these midges is kind of brownish, orangish. It's just a little collar. Doesn't have to be very big. And then I will just finish this off with a whip finish from the rear to the front and try my best to cover up any of that exposed white. Okay, now the last step is gonna be using some Solar Res Bone Dry. Um, what I like about the Solar Res is it will penetrate the thread wrap, so it actually, that's what kind of turns these thread wraps darker. You can see this fly is quite a bit lighter than the one I showed you in the beginning. And so same with the, so not just the white thread wraps, but also the brown thread wraps, they will darken up as I put this on there. And it actually takes a, probably 20 or 30 seconds for it to absorb completely. So the faster you get your UV torch on it, the lighter in color it will be. So it's kind of nice to be able to control it that way and make a few different with slightly different tones without doing without using any different materials. Um, to apply this, I like to start at the front of the fly and I'll just do that collar and I'll kind of go all the way around. I'm starting to run out of my bone dry, so I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. Good. Now I'll just hit it with my torch. Okay, and there you have it. That is my most commonly used and most effective midge on any water body where I like to fish midges. A lot of people, they're really stuck on using the huge midges. Um, I will go as big as like a size eight, like this guy. Um, because they do work, but the fish are following the naturals. Sometimes there are big bomber naturals that are in the size eight to 10 range, but more often they're really in the 12 to 16 size range. So if you're matching those naturals, I just, I've noticed a huge difference in my catch rate out there as I've started using flies that are more close in size to the naturals. Very common color combinations to use out there. Green, this one's hollow. I also do like to use just um, kind of more drab without using hollow tinsel, just, just thread wraps, just green thread. Let's see, this one's black, I believe. Very common. And then of course, the most common Pyramid Lake fly is the wine colored, kind of purplish maroon. Here's an example of one that I just let the thread wrap soak in for a lot longer. You can see that gave a darker body. Also very effective.